are. We have taken position on a high hill overlooking Cairo. So uh, let's just quickly take a look at our position. We already know the troops we have uh, at our disposal. And uh, there we have it. The outskirts of Cairo. We've got a nice big hill that we start on. And uh, let's go ahead and take some forward position against the enemy. And then trash them like we did before. So what I'm going to do is uh, first get this back up. And then we're going to get the... Let's see. There was the Lancaster, York and Lancaster Regiment. It's going to move up there. You know what? Three, three deep. Three deep is fine. Then we're going to get these four to come in between there, like that. And then we're going to get the other Lancaster Regiment to come in right over there. And looks like enemy artillery is already blasting us. So we're going to send our artillery forwards. The Highlanders and the 42nd Foot is going to go ahead and take up position over there. And the uh, Sudanese fellas are going to follow onto that side. Oh, that's quite close to the cavalry. Let's see. We already have some enemies moving up. I don't want the, the cavalry is kind of important for the mission. So I'm going to retreat the cavalry a bit. And we're going to get these guys into position. We're going to slowly walk them into position because there's no point in running. We'll uh, just get tired. And especially in this heat. We have an actual uh, artillery strike that has hit us. And has shot down quite a few of our men. Oh shit, they actually took lots of the York and Lancaster regiment. We're going to make sure that we get uh, the cannons so the, the unit can fire past the cannons. There we go. Right, get our artillery firing. I can see the enemy forces on the map. They're actually abandoning the cannons down here on the right. Which seems like a perfect target for the cavalry. So the cavalry is going to go ahead, take position on the right side of the outskirts of Cairo. This unit. Ah, look at that. Perfect hit by the enemy. We lost 25, 40, 45 men in that strike. Holy shit, the entire unit was almost destroyed. This unit needs to uh, move into a more spread out formation. The firing round shot at us though. So that's probably why um, we haven't lost that many of the other units. Let's see, the cavalry is moving forwards. Let's get the cavalry down here where we have, uh, we have two of these mortars. Go ahead and take those out. There's always a risk in Empire, I mean in Napoleon, that you you shoot your own men. So we're going to tell them to hold fire until they are actually uh, right upon the target. And then we'll see, uh, we've got some more artillery back here. And some actual cannons being rolled around over there. Let's see, have you uh, managed to... Uh, yes, you have. Advance and uh, open fire. Oh, great hit! It's like shooting fish in a barrel. This unit only has two people left trying to get away. Not going too well for them. And uh, the others uh, are also falling back. So only three of them left. Uh, and there's no point in continuing fire against uh, such small numbers. Those three guys, guess we're going to leave them to it. Right, let's go ahead and move the cavalry back up. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to move... We're going to move our troops. Going to get all of them here on this side. And we're going to start to advance towards the enemy. Still be up on the hill though, so we'll retain the high ground. Uh, these will also move forwards. Lord Kitchener will come up here so we can survey the battle. 
And right now our artillery is not able to fire, so it needs to limber up and move forwards. So there we have it, good advance against the enemy. What does the enemy actually have? Uh, we're gonna go, they've got a cavalry unit over here. Mardist, uh, I say cavalry, but these uh, camel troops. They've got 90 in this unit. And then what do they have over here? So they've got some of these uh, spear guys, some fuzzy woozies. Then they've got these, uh, I guess this is the main part of their army, is just these uh, Mardist Feladin. Felahin, Felahin. And there's uh, quite a few in each unit. But as you can see, they're only armed with pitchforks. Not entirely. Uh, I mean, technology wise, uh, it's not really up to par with uh, the Martini Henry rifle. Got mortar here. I guess the most uh, hardened troops, or the ones that we're going to have actual trouble dealing with, is going to be the um, the cavalry and uh, also the Libyan Bedouins which actually do have even though they do have just outdated muskets it's uh, gonna be a bit of a problem dealing with them and I guess this artillery piece which I imagine they have actually stolen from the Egyptian army so we're gonna get the artillery can I get no Get it on the high hill, get it forwards over here. Let's run it, because it is, after all, horse-drawn artillery. Oh, they're, they're uh, running away from these guys. A way drop for me! Glory waits for no man! Ooh, we've got uh, cavalry quite close. Let's go ahead and draw the lines right here. Get quickly into position. And then we're going to get, let's see, these three units. We're going to get them forward as well. And we're going to go into uh, just two ranks deep. And move these guys forwards as well. And then I guess the rest will be reserves. We'll hold reserves in the center. Time to unlimber and start to shell the enemy army. Important thing will be to shell the enemy artillery. This line, let's see. They have, they can fire to about there, which is, I think that's good. Um, we'll tell the, the British regiment to come in, be a bit more on an angle here in the forest. But then this line is the one we will advance towards the enemy, so we can open up fire on them. Yes. Okay, the artillery is ready to fire. Let's tell them to barrage fire a target. Go ahead and fire on that mortar. Immediately. Guys, get the second cannon firing. Oh, we have some... Uh, oh, enemy cavalry. It's moving forwards. On the left flank, testing our defense. But it seems that the camels... They're not really doing that well because that that unit was destroyed. That's a good gentleman. Okay, the main line will advance past that stone. You know what? We'll send this unit that was uh, very much damaged in the recent attack, we'll send them back to be uh, next to the cannon and instead I'm gonna send forwards this unit to take up position. There's a complete disarray within the Mardist lines or maybe it's a ruse to try and trick us. I'm not entirely sure. Since the cavalry on the side here was dispelled, we're gonna get our cavalry to come in around on this flank move quickly forwards and try to envelop the enemy. Infantry elite! I, I think it would be unwise, I think, to call you guys elites. Um, 
But if that helps you fight, then yes, maybe you are. Ah, the Scotsman. Keep it up, Highlanders. Let's see, what are they? I think they're all actually aiming for the, uh, the mortar at this point. We don't want to waste too much ammo just firing on them, but at the same time, I don't maybe want to walk or advance too much forward. We want to get a l gain a little bit of ground. And looking at how they're drawing the lines now, I think we're going to actually advance this line as well. But there's some, there could be some difficulty on that side, so I'm going to get these to be just behind there as reinforcement, and this unit can stand up here and fire over the others. So that'll be good. We'll get this regiment to come right next to the artillery. And... Uh, Oh, now they're actually fi firing on uh, on an infantry unit down here. So these fuzzy wuzzies are being fired upon. Where are you going? Ah, the mortar has been uh, destroyed. Yes, and I really mean that. Even the entire the entire structure of the entire mortar has been destroyed and it looks like this is actually getting the enemy to advance towards our position now they only have pitchforks but there are about a, f a few thousand of them with pitchforks so um, still quite dangerous keep up the fire lads keep up the fire steady fire wins the day Good old British discipline. Let's see, what, how's it going for the enemy advancing across open ground against us? Not very well, as you can see. They're being utterly destroyed. Oh, I'm worried because, ah, let's see. Cavalry. Shit, cavalry and uh, some the Libyan Bedouins are engaging our cavalry and it's not actually going well so the cavalry has to retreat fall back immediately unless you want to be destroyed fall back quickly oh th there's gonna be a difficulty here on the flank did I send uh, yes I sent these two extra units they'll move quickly to take up position here and so the these lines have somewhere to retreat to cavalry will fall back and then these three units will instead switch to make the line across there instead this side the front line seems to be holding steady we've got some cavalry on the flank next to the Royal Highlanders but we got a unit in the back which is helping out and over here the the line is holding we have reformed it we fell back and we reformed the cavalry that did uh, or the oh shit there I think they're gonna actually reach the line over here go on fire Ah, uh, just as they reached the line, they decided that, you know what, it was going to be too much for them. And they are retreating. But the Bedouins are now moving up. The general just uh, inspire them to keep them going forwards towards us. But it's no use. It's too little too late. The lines are holding. And uh, we're putting down some amazing firepower down towards the enemy lines and uh, it's bit gonna be a question about even if any of these men are gonna make it out of here we've got two guys right here still within range so one guy is gonna be able to make it out of there no and, and neither is most of these so we still suffered some casualties among especially among the British troops 
Uh, I guess the enemy really focused in on them. One uh, another thing I noticed is that the the Highlanders here, this unit, have are all out of ammo. Quite, you know what? Quite a few, um, quite a few units in this army. It's completely out of ammo. That's not very good. So, I guess I need to be more worried about uh, keeping tabs on uh, how much ammo we're using. Let's see. The last unit remaining. It's the general and his artillery. Let's move forwards the art the cavalry. You know what? Only one of the cavalry units. And uh, shoot those guys down. The one the units that still have a respectable amount of ammo will then move this way and attack the enemy. Is our artillery? Able to even fire that far? No, it's out of range compared to the enemy. But the enemy has taken quite a poor artillery position. So I don't think we will have that much of a problem expelling them from their position. I'm hoping that the uh, the enemy's uh, the enemy's general unit don't actually have any muskets to fire back with. And seemingly they don't. So we have uh, fielded they just shooting them down. Firing through here. And just softening it up for the infantry which are on their way. I think we'll only need these two units. That'll probably be enough to shoot down the enemy. We'll tell them to run as fast as possible. You know what? It could be interesting to actually use the uh, fire an advance mode. So we'll set it up like that and we'll have them fire at advance. We're gonna tell these guys to come in after so these guys give plenty of time to do fire in advance. The first York and Lancaster regiment of artillery that is. Okay, so the cannon is slowly being shot to pieces. There are only one artillery piece now being uh, operated. The cavalry will retire. And now it's up to the uh, 1st Regiment of Artillery, York and Lancaster Regiment. To do fire in advance. So there we go, 1st rank. 2nd rank advance. Free send. Oh, they did, didn't even fire. Let's see. Oh, they didn't fire either. So just first rank. I guess because of the mod, it might be that... Oh shit, the enemy is coming way too close. Form square! Form square! Form square immediately. And open fire! The general... The enemy general... He's dead. And so is the rest of his bastardly bodyguard. Just in time for the Sudanese fellows to come in and provide some extra firepower. Keep up the fire, lads. Well, we're sure to win this. Okay, so both enemy generals are at this point deceased. Dead, shot to pieces. And victory was achieved. Very nice.
Statistics of the battle we lost about 300 men or 270 men in total. Uh, most of that, or a lot of that, we saw from when the first or the second uh, unit of the first unit of artillery, uh, Lancaster, York, and Lancaster regiment got hit and killed, took 75 men out of them. So that that's a large part of this. While the enemy deployed 2,592 men, where of which not a single one survived. You know what? Comparing these um, these statistics, we can see that the enemy killed about 200 men, which su would suggest that we shot about 72 men of our own. Not entirely sure what happened there. It could be deserters as we moved into Cairo. Some of the Feladine might have gone. Um, into town and uh, started ransacking a bit. Not very good if you want to keep the town in order and not um, increase the popularity of the Mardis movement. Um, but there we have it. Cairo, which is a rather big victory, I must say, um, that we've managed to retake Cairo now we just need to m continue to move down, link up with Gordon, and then, after that, we can move towards the Ottomans. At this point, it seems like there's not a lot of Mahdist armies left. We've got a smaller force over here, but most of them are now actually trapped in between Gordon and... Uh, and Kitchener, which is in Cairo, but it looks like Cairo might very well rebel against us. Uh, what we're going to do, clamor for reform, I'm going to torch this college. That's going to help. And then the ordnance factory needs to be repaired. And we're going to build an army encampment. And I also exempted the... Uh, the town from tax so they can recuperate from all the dead people. Um, I guess there are a lot of jobs open right now in Cairo since we shot about, well, a lot of those troops, the, uh, the Mahdi's troops are actually from down from Sudan, so not actual Egyptian people. Um, uh, Theodor Nix, what, gentleman scientist and what is he? A trickster! Oh. His gentleman club is inaccurately named, their chief business being O. So a bit of a trickster. He might just cause a lot of trouble if we send him into uh, Cairo, but I think it actually helps out a little bit. There we go. Agent effect. Maybe he's a, he's a bit of a nice chap and uh, amusing to the populace. But they're, they're very resistant to the fact that the British Empire now is occupied in town. Most of this, I think, will be just be swept over by Wolsey. So I could probably do that in between episodes. And then uh, next one, we'll route the last forces of the Mahdi down here. And then we'll continue on to fight the, the Ottomans. And hopefully by that time, we'll have uh, a second army ready to come in and actually attack here in, up in Syria and uh, could take control over parts of Syria and Lebanon to cut off the supply route of the Ottoman Empire so they'll have to ship it in and shipping stuff in against the British Navy uh, probably is not going to work out for them most of the Ottoman army is actually located in Damascus so quite far from the actual front line and we can see that the Bedouins have actually 
gone ahead, the, the, they have actually gone ahead and taken Jerusalem in Judea. So very interesting strike there. But they do not have a lot of forces, but that is definitely going to upset the order within the Ottoman Empire. And probably could rise to a number of insurrections against them. But there we have it, the British army has successfully taken two towns and are well on their way of securing the entire, uh, the entirety of Egypt and expelling the Mahdi and his followers. Uh, and uh, as I always say, I hope you fellows enjoyed this and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!